The proxy design pattern provides controlled access to objects. It works by hiding the real object behind a placeholder, also known as a proxy. The proxy has the same interface as the original object. Clients use this proxy instead of accessing the object directly. The requests get delegated to the actual object. Before or after performing the requests on the original object, the proxy can inject its own logic. It may also perform optimizations such as lazy initialization or protecting the underlying object from unauthorized access. We can apply the proxy pattern in various situations. Let's have a look at the three most popular uses. Accessing remote resources like web services. A remote proxy acts as a local placeholder for a remote service object. Clients use the proxy, which in turn passes the requests over the network. The remote proxy hides the complexity of network calls. Clients can work with the remote service as if it were a local object. The proxy can be useful when dealing with expensive resources that are used infrequently. We can improve the performance of our system and reduce its memory usage by postponing the instantiation of such heavyweight objects until the first time they are used. Lazy initialization is a very useful feature. Swift provides built-in support for it. The third widespread use of the proxy is access control. We can limit the access to sensitive objects through a protective proxy. The proxy checks if the caller meets specific criteria before forwarding its request to the underlying protected resource. The proxy has several other uses, but the essence of this pattern is that it provides controlled access to an underlying object through a surrogate. We're going to implement an example to highlight the problem solved by the proxy design pattern. Let's create a new playground project called Slow Loader. Now add a new Swift source file called Database Controller. We'll create a protocol with the same name. It should be public protocol database controller. The protocol defines two method requirements. Save and undo. Next, we define an adopting type. Core Data Manager is a public class and it adopts the database controller protocol. Let's add the stubs. Since we don't aim to create a real Core Data controller, we'll simply emit log messages. We'll simulate the creation of an object that is very resource intensive. The easiest way to mimic this behavior is by adding a delay in the initializer. Now I fake the slow initialization by calling sleep with a delay of 3 seconds. However, types that perform expensive initialization logic aren't uncommon in real life either. And these low performers may go unnoticed, especially if we don't have performance tests in place. Clients can retrieve a database controller instance through the make database controller factory method. The method returns an object of a type that conforms to the database controller protocol. In this case, a core data manager instance. Next, we simulate an application that uses a database controller object. Let's print a message to indicate that the app is starting. Then, create a database controller instance. I call the factory method. And let's print another message showing that the app has loaded successfully. At some point in our code, we use the controller, for example, by invoking its save method. Let's run the playground. After displaying the very first console message, the application appears to be frozen. The execution continues eventually, but the app's performance is heavily affected. We could improve the loading time of our app by delaying the initialization of the heavyweight object until it's actually needed. That's a good practice since, in certain scenarios, we might not use the controller at all. Let me show you what I mean. Define a new boolean variable, context changed, initialized to false. I call the controller save method only if it makes sense, if there were some changes. And now let's rerun the playground. Although we don't use the database controller object at all, it gets initialized and keeps slowing us down. So why initialize it in the first place? 
we need to solve the performance issue caused by the database controller object. Not only does it take a lot of time to instantiate it, but we might not even need this object. Delaying the database controller object's initialization until its first use sounds like a viable solution. This technique is known as lazy initialization and can be implemented using the proxy design pattern elegantly. We're going to introduce a proxy class. The proxy delegates the requests to the real core data manager object. However, the initialization of the core data manager property is deferred until the client invokes either the save or the undo method. The core data manager object is only initialized once when it gets accessed for the very first time. All right, now let's implement this behavior. Switch to the database controller.swift file. We create the proxy class. Let's call it core data proxy. Core data proxy adopts the database controller protocol. I add the stubs. Let's leave them empty for now. Core data proxy conforms to the database controller protocol. Thus, it exposes the same interface as core data manager. That's imperative because it allows us to replace the original object with the proxy. Next, declare a private property. Real manager represents the proxied core data manager object. We won't initialize this property right away, so it should be optional. Now, there are different ways to implement the lazy initialization part. I'm going to define a computed property that returns a fully initialized core data manager object. And let's implement this getter. First, I check if the real manager property has been initialized. If it's nil, we need to initialize the real manager property before returning it. If it's been initialized already, we return the valid instance. The save and undo methods delegate the request to the real core data manager object. Core data manager is optional, so we're using optional chaining. When the client calls any of these methods on the proxy for the first time, the computed properties gathered is executed which in turn initializes the real manager property. What we've implemented is a virtual proxy. Instead of creating the resource-heavy objects right away, we can delay their initialization and create them when they are actually needed. One final modification is required. The factory method should return a proxy instance rather than a core data manager object. And the good news is we don't have to change anything on the client side. Now, let's execute the playground. There was no delay between the two messages. The app is loading and ready appeared instantly in the console. How about changing the value of the context change variable to true? And let's rerun the playground. The first two messages get displayed promptly as expected. However, we need to wait several seconds for the third all changes saved message to appear. The postponed initialization of the core data manager property happens when we call one of the proxy's methods for the first time. Successive calls won't introduce such delays, because the real manager object is already initialized. Let's call undo and also save for a second time. Now execute the playground. Again, the third message gets delayed. However, the last two messages appear instantly. Postponing the creation of expensive objects until the first time they are used is a smart tactic. In fact, Swift has a built-in language feature that enables lazy initialization for stored properties. All we need is to mark the property with the lazy modifier. Let's use this feature to clean up the code of the core data proxy class. Label the core data manager property as lazy. We get an error. Lazy must not be used on a computed property. Indeed, lazy initialization wouldn't make sense for computed properties. The value of a computed property is not stored in memory. Instead, its value gets computed each time we access it. So let's change the property to a stored one by getting rid of the gather. The backup real manager property became obsolete. Let's remove it too. And next we're going to initialize the lazy property. This initialization runs only once when we use the core data manager for the first time. 
the property doesn't need to be optional anymore. And we don't even need to provide the type. Since Core Data Manager isn't an optional property anymore, we should remove the optional chaining when delegating the request to the Core Data Manager. And we're done here. The playground works as before, but we got rid of a lot of code lines. And the proxy class looks way cleaner, thanks to the built-in language support for lazy properties. The proxy design pattern should be applied whenever using a placeholder instead of a real object makes sense. Typically, a proxy is used in the following cases. To allow access to remote resources like web services. The remote proxy acts as a local placeholder for a remote object. Clients can call methods of this local representative, which in turn forwards the request to the remote object. Another frequent use is managing the creation of expensive resources. We can improve the performance of our code by postponing the creation of costly resources until they are first accessed. We can use a proxy to control access to sensitive objects. The proxy checks whether the caller has the appropriate permissions required to use the protected resource. The proxy should replace the underlying object without changes in the client code. The benefits of the proxy pattern are rendered useless if clients can bypass the surrogate and use the underlying types directly. 